This is a video about post-operative management of blood glucose levels in adults with diabetes and stress hyperglycemia. This video will review a potential management algorithm that may be suitable to use at your institution. This video is for medical professionals caring for post-operative adult patients with diabetes or stress hyperglycemia on surgical wards. This is an educational video and is not meant to replace clinical judgment. This video will teach you some practical algorithms to manage postoperative patients with type 1 diabetes, type 2 diabetes, and stress hyperglycemia. This presentation does not apply to patients in the intensive care, patients with post-transplant diabetes, patients on high doses of steroids, patients receiving total parenteral nutrition or tube feeds. Stress hyperglycemia. For the first 24 hours after surgery, all patients without pre-existing diabetes should still have their capillary blood glucose levels checked four times a day. As long as the capillary blood glucose does not exceed 10 millimoles per liter on two consecutive occasions, we can conclude that the patient does not have stress hyperglycemia and capillary blood glucose monitoring can be discontinued. If the capillary blood glucose level exceeds 10 millimoles per liter on two consecutive occasions, then the patient may have stress hyperglycemia. Check hemoglobin A1c. If hemoglobin A1c is less than 7%, continue QID capillary glu blood glucose monitoring and prescribe three units of rapid subcutaneous insulin correction QID to be given if capillary glucose exceeds 16 millimoles per liter. Most importantly, educate the patient about stress hyperglycemia and make sure they follow up with their family physician after discharge from the hospital. The family physician will need to monitor for the onset of diabetes. If the hemoglobin A1C level is higher than 7%, then the patient does not have stress hyperglycemia. Rather, they have undiagnosed diabetes. Follow the algorithm for pre-diabetes and diet-controlled type 2 diabetes in the next slide. Pre-diabetes and diet-controlled type 2 diabetes. Order QID capillary blood glucose monitoring and three units of rapid correction insulin with each meal and at bedtime if the glucose level exceeds 16 millimoles per liter. Then find the preoperative hemoglobin A1C level or Order a hemoglobin A1C if none is available in the last three months. If the preoperative hemoglobin A1C is less than 7%, continue the above orders. If the hemoglobin A1C is between 7 and 9%, the patient may need a medication to treat their diabetes. Consider starting metformin 500 mg BID if creatinine is less than 130, or use linagliptin 5 mg per day. Linagliptin may be used even if the patient has, has renal failure. A hemoglobin A1c over 9% indicates severe undiagnosed pre-existing hyperglycemia. Contact endocrinology for advice. In all cases, make sure the patient receives appropriate diabetes education and follow-up with their family physician after discharge from the hospital. Type 2 diabetes not on insulin. For all patients, order QID capillary blood glucose levels and use a multi-daily injection insulin regimen until they tolerate a full diabetic diet and are ready to resume their home medications. If the hemoglobin A1c is less than 9%, creatinine is less than 130, and liver enzymes are normal, resume non-insulin therapy except for SGLT2 inhibitors and GLP-1 agonists. If hemoglobin A1c is less than 9%, but the renal function has not recovered, then use linagliptin 5 mg per day. Once renal function normalizes, resume other non-insulin-based medications except SGLT2 inhibitors and GLP-1 agonists. If in doubt, contact endocrinology for advice. Of course, a hemoglobin A1c level close to 9% is not good and indicates poor diabetes control at baseline but this can be addressed by the patient's family physician after discharge from the hospital. If the preoperative hemoglobin A1C is greater than 9%, contact endocrinology for advice. In all cases, 
Make sure the patient receives appropriate diabetes education and follow up with their family physician after discharge from the hospital. Type 2 diabetes on insulin. Order QID capillary blood glucose monitoring for all patients and use a multi-daily injection insulin regimen until they tolerate a full diabetic diet. Then resume the preoperative insulin regimen but only give 90% of the preoperative insulin dose to start. The patient may also resume non-insulin medications if renal function has normalized. If creatinine remains over 130, use only linagliptin, 5 mg per day, until renal function normalizes. If in doubt, contact endocrinology for advice. In all cases, make sure the patient receives appropriate diabetes education and follow-up with their family physician after discharge from the hospital. Type 1 Diabetes The endocrine service should manage all patients with type 1 diabetes. Be sure to get in touch with the endocrine service immediately after surgery. Do not stop intravenous or subcutaneous insulin for any patient with type 1 diabetes without first discussing with the endocrine service. Remember, patients with type 1 diabetes always need insulin, even if they are not eating. Do not stop intravenous or subcutaneous insulin for any patient with type 1 diabetes without first discussing with the endocrine service. Hopefully, this video has taught you practical algorithms to manage postoperative patients with type 1 diabetes, type 2 diabetes, stress hyperglycemia.